really impressive. Tell us about your team. Um, I've got a fairly small team uh, of world builders. Um, all of them are very talented. Um, some of them are fairly new to the industry. Some of them have, have done it before. Uh, I hired one of the gentlemen I worked on uh, WoW with, uh, Bo Bell. Um, he's one of my world builders. And uh, just hired on an, uh, another senior who um, has been working in the industry for a number of years. Um, so I've got a very talented team, and uh, they know what they're doing. I'm very impressed with their work, and, and very they're very capable. I feel like I can hand them any number of things and they'll just take it and do amazing things with it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the coolest parts is I can I can take what I have from art and from content mm -hmm. and say, okay, we have a forest world and I can say, here, you know, come up with this forest world and man, when when one of my world builders does that, they come back with maps and this and that and it, it takes on just this whole life of its mm -hmm. own. It's very interesting. It's okay. very cool. Okay. What are some of the challenges that you face on a day to day basis? Um, well building worlds is really one of the things about it is it's, it's at the back end of a whole lot of processes. Um, you have content design, systems design, um, you have programming, you have art, and all of these people have a say into what, what everything looks like, what mm -hmm. everything feels like, how everything plays. Systems has a lot of interest in, in how the game plays. Content has a lot of interest in uh, you know, what the worlds are and what's happening there. Um, programming has a lot of interest in what's on the worlds and, and how you're building them because they have to make all that happen. Right. And the art team has uh, a lot of desire to see it come out looking in a certain way. Um, and so to build a world, we really need all of those teams to get all their stuff together mm -hmm. and bring it to us. And we're really mm -hmm. the back end of all of those processes. So once all of these people have finished their tasks and their work, they bring it to us, and then we take all of that and we put it all together to create the final thing that the player sees. Right. And so one of the one of the biggest challenges we face is, you know, it's a milestone-based project and it's in the games industry and there's always things slipping. You don't foresee something happening here or there. And so when it gets to world building, there may already have been some slips here and there. It might already be pressured for time. So when, by the time it gets to us, it's really, you know, our schedule is really tight. Yeah, it sounds like almost everyone wants a piece of you in some way or another. In How do you way, stay yeah. on top of that? Uh, communication. Yeah. If you're not talking to people, you're, it's all over. Yeah. You know, it happens. It happens sometimes, but you know, you'll be working on something. It's like, no, no, I wanted it like this. Then you have to go back and figure out where that lack of communication occurred and fix it. I think we've got great communication on our team here. Um, we, we're all talking to each other. We, we talk with the programming team. We talk mm -hmm. with the art team. We talk with the. You know, we sit in the same room with the systems and the and the content people. And uh, my world builders every day are talking with the uh, uh, the content people about the worlds and what the story is and how that ties to, you know, how it looks, because how a world looks and how it what the story is go hand in hand. You can't mm -hmm. just throw a couple of hills down and expect people to get that there's a war going on here and it's mm -hmm. been going on for 15 years. Um, you need to do things visually to give players that impression. The moment a player steps through the gate, we want them to see and know what's happening. And maybe not exactly what's happening, but to get an impression of what's happening. You know, they, might, they may not know that uh, these Jaffa invaded this planet 15 years ago and there's been a war going ever since, but the moment they want, walk through the gate, we want them to realize there's a war here. This is a battle zone. There are ruins. There are smoking craters. There is something going on. Uh, and you have to do that visually because otherwise we're just throwing text up on the screen. We're back to the days of Zork. So, I mean, I love Zork, but I you get what that. I'm talking about. But I'll, I'll, I hope there's also like an el audio element to that. Oh, there is. We have a we have an audio designer who's very good, and uh, he's got some really cool stuff. And uh, every time I walk into a zone that has been given an audio treatment, it's really cool because it mm -hmm. adds that element that makes you go, ooh, sends little shivers, shivers down your spine. Yeah, it's not placeholder music. This is the stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is what it's, it's like, made wow, of. Wow, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> what software do you use when you're developing your worlds? We use a lot, uh, actually, because anything that we can get our hands on that makes the whole process faster and easier for us mm -hmm. is a benefit. Um, you know, it is a project. It does have a timeline. We do have an end date. Um, so we kind of need to get these things done quickly. And so we need to hit that quality that we want. We want the look and the quality of story 
in the time frame we've got. And so anything we can use to make that happen is, is beneficial. So we use um, everything from uh, Photoshop and Word and stuff like that to do initial design labs where we write up what, it, what mm -hmm. we want it to be or we draw out maps of what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use uh, uh, SketchUp as a, as a program and we take, uh, we take that and we build out areas um, to kind of get quick, quick rough looks at them and see you know, how they're laid out, how we think they're going to play. Um, SketchUp's a great program. It lets us create little slideshows that show off entire scenes from whole different angles. And it's completely in 3D, and it's very, very fast. Mm -hmm. um, even people who aren't very technically inclined or artistically inclined can just go in there and bust out uh, really interesting 3D structures very quickly. Um, and then we use uh, World Machine to create... Uh, kind of generic landscape models, so we can use it to create eroded hills or mountains or cliffs or valleys or really any kind of landscape um, formation that you might see in the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out there and you see these plateaus with the eroded dirt down the sides, and we want to capture that. Um, and so what, what World Machine lets us do is it allows us to create that kind of thing. It allows us to say we've got this plateau and we want a little more erosion or a little less erosion or we want a deeper valley or we want a higher plateau. And we mess with that. And then what, once we've created this template of what we think looks really good, um, we take it and we use a, a program called Mudbox. And Mudbox. What, Mudbox. Mudbox, yeah. It's actually an art program um, that they use to apply height maps to models. And it works really well. And what we use it for is we take this height map that we create in World Machine which is a, a black and white height map of what we've created with the erosion in the hills. And we can then paint that really anywhere we want. We can scale it, we can size it, we can shrink it, we can grow it, we can add filters to it, and you know, copy, paste it, do whatever we need to in Mudbox mm -hmm. to create our, our final height map that we then import into the, the program to give us all of our terrain. Pretty much right out the door, we have a good 80, 90% of our terrain done. Wow. Um, you know, and wow, that kind of thing took us four to six weeks and with our process through World Machine and Mudbox, it takes us maybe a day or two tops. So it's the same level of quality. My gosh. Yeah. One of the things that I always wonder about is texture mapping. Do you get to go out there and photograph stuff and then bring it back in and paste it on objects, um, and skins, or that's how more does that texture work? For the art, that's more a question for the art team because, okay. uh, you know, if you go out there and take a picture of something and you bring it back, it creates a definite style for your game. If I take a picture of a cliffside and paint it on a cliffside, that creates a style. Um, and that style is very photorealistic. And many games use that style. Um, our game has a, a little more stylized of a look to it. And Howard's been doing just some awesome stuff with our art and making it look stylized yet still capture Stargate. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we do is a lot of our textures are hand painted. Then we get them and paint them on that terrain. Um, um, we're okay. using a slightly modified Unreal 3 engine to actually paint textures on terrain and apply static meshes into terrain and um, do all that kind of stuff. Um, and then once that's done, it's it's ready for uh, ready for prime time. What do you take into account when initially designing an environment? Where does your department come in? Like I said earlier, we come in kind of at the end. Um, I mean, okay. not totally at the end. That's when yeah. we start working on it is at the end. But our... My teammates are involved from very early on. Uh, content will say, hey, we want a world that's like this. And they'll sit down with the world builder who's been assigned to work on that world. And um, they'll come up with the, what the world is. And they'll sit down together and talk about what they want it to be, what they want it to kind of feel like, what they want going on there, what events, history, and all that stuff. So we're involved from that level. And then the first thing we do is we take that information and we start creating a design layout tells us what the environment is. Is it a forest? Is it a fall forest, a snowy forest, a coniferous forest, a deciduous forest? Um, is it a jungle? Does it look like the island on Lost? Does it, uh, <laughs> you know, it, all that kind of stuff. What kind of people live here? Do mm -hmm. they have a culture? What is their culture? Mm -hmm. What kind of economy do they have? What kind of animals live here? What kind of ambient animals? Uh, violent, aggressive animals? Are there aggressive animals? Um, what do these people feel about the world they're on? How do they feel about the players? Um, all of that really comes in at that initial phase, which is all done on paper. Uh, and the reason is that you know, when you do it on paper, it's very easy to iterate. You can, you can write it down a thousand different times, and it takes a lot less time than if you go in and build the whole thing, and then go in and build the whole thing again. Right. So we try to nail out as much as possible, as fast as possible, on the paper phase. Okay. Um, and that's kind of where we that's kind of where we start on it. And then once that paper phase is done, by then we've got concept art and we've got um, a full idea on what this world is supposed to be, and we can actually start building it. 